think, okay, yeah, I think my audio is working. All right, so hello and welcome to Science Sunday with me, your host, Annie Wilson. We are going to work on uh, some amateur astronomer data from our very own uh, community member, Keeper of Maps. I don't think he's in chat today. I don't think he knows that's what I'm doing today. Last week we worked on different uh, amateur astronomer data taken by a telescope on the ground, and we're going to use the same kind of processes for this. The reason why we're doing this is because starting tomorrow, we are taking a break for the entire week of Thanksgiving and maybe a bit longer. I don't know, but I know we're taking from tomorrow until after Thanksgiving off. After that, um, we are, by we, I mean, Dr. Pamela, Susie, and myself are traveling to Florida where we were supposed to see a rocket launch. That's not happening. I don't have my laptop set up to stream. And I know one of the Sundays that I'll be gone, I'll just be traveling that day. The 15th, I'm going to be traveling. That's it. Um, the 8th, the 8th is when I won't be traveling, but I, again, I'm not set up to stream on the laptop and I'm quite honestly not going to try. I don't want to start an image and then walk away from it for a while. And these amateur astronomer images are perfect for doing in one session. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to, you know, knock this one out and yeah, yeah. So I am, yeah, yeah, Rigel, I am totally keeping secrets from Keeper of Maps. Uh, he'll watch this later and he'll, he'll scold me. So, all right, so let's get the music started again. And yeah, let's get started. So we did make our fundraising goal for those that missed it. I keep losing OBS. We did meet our fundraising goal. The ongoing goal you see at the bottom of your screen for bits is just for fun. It'll get met one day. Um, don't stress about that one too much. But that bit goal that was on the bottom of your screen was for face reveal of the favorite humans. So, mmm, rice. Who's having rice? Wayne Johnson says, tomorrow I'm raising money for the Royal British Legion by having a haircut for the first time since 1986. 1986. I just, I can't get, I can't get over that. Astro Wise asks, may I ask what, what dates you'll be in Florida? Um... I think it's the 7th through the 14th. So, there was originally a SpaceX launch that was going to be happening that time, but um, it got pushed up. So, now we're like, well, crap, which is a little annoying. And by little annoying, I mean very annoying. All right, so we're just going to label this red, green, and blue. And this is the, this is of M42. And he named it Yellow Stack, and I don't know why it's called Yellow Stack. But yeah, we're supposed to be in there, supposed to be there from the, the 7th through the 14th because I know I'll be traveling the 6th and the 15th. And it's just one of those things. Is this another Red Cat DSLR image? Uh, asks Kerbal. It is indeed. I don't know for sure if it's with that same modified camera or if it's with a different modified camera. I know last week's image was with a modified camera that captured more IR and this week I really don't know. Um, I don't know, but this was taken with the DSLR. 
for sure. So we found last week that playing with the curves was the best way to do what we want to do because right now this image has essentially visual range and it's very blue. Very blue. And what we are literally going to do is I made two copies and we are going to make each layer be one certain color. So for this first layer, let me turn off these other two layers. For this first layer, I'm getting rid of all the green and I'm going to get rid of all the blue. Hey, 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 hey. Dogs are like, no, we're not done, mom. Oh, that, that doesn't, that doesn't help. You can't see him because my camera doesn't go down that far, but Puck likes to paw at my lap after I yell at him. <laughs> hey, knock that off. My long-term goal for this image is to get the background to be <laughs> black. I might have to birth <laughs> Tinker is very much, this is not what I was expecting, but uh, this is what you get when you bark and you won't be quiet. You get to sit in mom's lap. <laughs> Alright, give me a second to fix my hair. Hair is fixed, mostly. I should have just braided it like I normally do. Alright, we lost chat and everything else because of you, Tink. Um... As far as launches go, the funniest thing that goes on with my family right now, or that I hear from my family right now, is how they missed the Star Lab launch because they went to go, every time I go visit my grandfather, um, I hear a different, I hear more of the story. And they didn't get to go to, or they didn't watch the Saturn V with the Star Lab launch on it because they went to a relative's house the next day. So they had to travel to the relative's house. And yeah, Veronica, it is getting long. I need to get it cut. Like, really bad. This is apparently something I do. I just let my hair go until I can't stand how long it is anymore. And then I'll get it cut. Adjustments, we want curves. There you go, lay down, good girl. Oops, nope. We want layer, adjustment layer. I'll find it here, I'll find it here. Use previous layers, clipping mask, and boom. And this is our green, so we're gonna go to our red. Turn the red down. Turn the blue down, and now we have green. And we should probably set these to... Yeah, I, I've i thought about cutting it myself. Um, I just don't trust myself to cut it in a straight, straight. And part of that is 
yeah, my hair has no texture to it. None. It is very straight. Which a lot of people are like, oh, that's awesome. Like, including my sister, who's like, how did you get perfectly straight hair? And I'm like, this is just how my hair is. It, it doesn't do anything. Ooh, yeah, absolutely. Look at that conjunction tonight, uh, Kerbal. But yeah, because there's no texture to my hair, it's not forgiving and any mistakes stand out. So that's, I, I have cut it once myself. <laughs> and that was the very first night of real basic training. Um, and the way it was after that just annoyed me so much. That that's not, I know it's not something I want to do. Oh, Egon Greg is streaming the uh, the conjunction tonight too. That'll be cool. All right, there we go. And set this as screen. So I know it looks the same as everything else, but we'll fix it. We're we're gonna play with other things. Rocket nineteen fifty nine says, "Donate your hair to kids with cancer." Um, I might. I think if I get it trimmed to shoulder length, I think that might be enough length. I don't know. If I got my hair like buzz cut, it would definitely be long enough for a like decent shoulder length wig for a kid. But I have, because I don't get it very trimmed very often, I probably have this much worth of split ends. And that definitely, yeah, they want 10 inches. So after split ends, I don't think this might be 10 inches. I think I'd have to get it really short. Because normally when I get it trimmed, I just get it trimmed to my shoulder. Um, I don't think that's, I don't, I can't really get the whole thing. I'm not sure that that's 10 inches. So I would probably have to really go for a pixie cut and, um, I don't know if I'm ready for a pixie cut, honestly. That seems like a lot of work. Because I'd have to style it every day. And I know that it'll go through that weird, awkward growing out phase, too. Um, I'm not sure who else does the thing. Rocket1959 says, you only live once. Yeah, um, here's the problem with getting my hair cut that short. Uh, apparently, mem some members of my family are very traditional. Very traditional. And um, my grandfather has dementia as well. So I am a little worried that if I do something drastic with my hair, that it will confuse my grandfather. Um... And that's not something I want to do. If it was just a matter of my family being traditional, it'd be a little different. Um, but yeah, I, I worry about my grandfather. He already struggles with knowing for sure who I am. Like he has his good days and his bad days. Like. Some days he recognizes that I am related to somebody. And some days he's thinks I'm a nurse. I think the last time I was over there, it was time for dinner and we all got up. And um, he got up because he takes the longest. So I just let him walk first. And uh, he's like, well, I'm gonna go stuff my, my gullet. See you next time. I'm like, I'm, I'm staying for dinner too, grandpa. Um, and he recognizes me, and I'm afraid, but the haircut would be a little too drastic. Hey, this is looking better already. So that's, that's my reasoning. Maybe after I move, I'll do the pixie cut. I think I can tolerate the really long hair for a bit longer. All right, cool. Let's turn on all the layers again. We have more of a black sky. That's pretty cool. 
I'm gonna remind you what it looks like. This is M42, Veronica. Yeah, Kerbal, you might be surprised at how fast it, it progresses. I could have sworn that he knew who I was at his birthday, which was in September, but I really don't think he knew. I don't think he knew who a lot of the people were. I think he was just happy to be with people. Um, I think he recognizes my fiancé, or at least he recognizes my fiancé's name. Um... Because I mentioned my fiance's name, and Grandpa was like, "Well, we have—I haven't seen him in a while," and I'm like, "There's a reason for that, Grandpa." All right, so we should probably on each of these layers do a what did what did we do? We did a surface blur last time. I'm gonna do a noise reduction. So I'm gonna do reduce noise. gonna have it do that Ooh, binoculars would probably help with being able to see this with the naked eye too because I don't know if filter reduce noise I was watching videos, they're not public videos, I was watching videos and one of the people being interviewed was like, just buy binoculars and have them. Um, buy binoculars and have them. Which if you think about it, you know, binoculars can be used for many things. They can be used for sporting events, they can be used for... Um, things like bird watching, they can be used to observe the night sky, like binoculars are pretty freaking amazing when you really think about it. It's not super specialized and you can just toss them in your backpack and go. So that's pretty cool. Bad Panda Bear says about to mention, my dad would act like he knew who I was and I wouldn't realize it until he'd say something odd. Yeah, my grandfather gets me, um, he knows I'm one of his grandchildren, partially because I call him grandpa, but he doesn't know which child I belong to, and it doesn't help because when I show up, I don't show up with my parents, so he's lost that association. Uh, he said before that I am one of my aunt's children, which my aunt does have a daughter that's close to my age. And he said that I am another, another one of my uncle's uh, children who has a daughter that's in college. And I just, by just, I mean, I graduated college three years ago, but that was kind of a big deal when I did finally graduate. Um, but the last time that he, um, you know, was figuring out whose kid I was, he got my mom right, but my dad wrong, which I thought was funny. Like, my, uh, his caretaker was amused too. He's like, well, he got half of it. I'm like, yeah, he got, he got half of it. He got half of it. I mean, that's something. I'm probably gonna hate how I do these curves. I wish Keeper was here so he could be like, So he could be like, yeah, this is great. Or no, this is terrible. Yeah, that's way too much. Yeah, but lately I think Grandpa just associates, or just thinks I'm one of the nurses, that I'm just there to work. Which is fine. I don't really care. I've talked a little bit about it before, and um, 
I'm just doing surface blur. Yeah, I know. I know, Veronica, it does look wonky in the process, but it does often look a lot better once I'm done with everything. Um, yeah, Grandpa sometimes think I'm, thinks I'm one of the nurses and whatever. I don't particularly care. Because um, from the reading I've done is that it's actually more important that the visit is positive. Like having a positive visit is good for you know, the patient, in this case it would be my grandfather, than it is for anything else. And if I'm enjoying it and he's enjoying it, then it doesn't really matter who he thinks I am. Plus it does give my uncle a little bit of a break. And the latest thing that I've done while we've been going over there, which I find hilarious, is this past week we baked an apple pie and it sounds like we're going to do it again um, soon. Sounds like we're going to do it again this week. And I, I am not joking. I'm looking forward to baking an apple pie with my, my uncle. We got out one of my uh, grandmother's cookbooks and I did surface layer, right? Yeah, I did surface blur. Um, we got out one of my grandmother's cookbooks and that was the first time I had made an apple pie from like that simple of a recipe. Oh, wow. Oh, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. The blue came out really strong. Blue came out way stronger than I wanted it to. Uh, Astro Wise asked me what kind of apples do I use? Um, I don't know what kind of apples we used this last time. I was there because it all I know is that they were seconds from a local orchard. That's literally all I know. Um, I know when I go this week, I will probably take uh, just a bag of green apples, or I might try to. I do honey crisp, but honey crisp apples are so expensive. They really are. The varieties that my grandmother's cookbook was calling for were varieties I'd never heard of, which kind of blew me out of the water. Like wine sap, like I've, I think I've read about wine sap apples, but I've never, you know, seen them. Astrowise says, save the Honeycrisp for eating fresh. Exactly, they are definitely good fresh eating apples. Um, Fuji, I know, are better fresh. Crab apples apparently make a decent jelly. Oh, okay, so it is a regional thing. Red sour apple. I wondered if it was just a regional thing. If it wasn't Thanksgiving week, I'd go down to the, the orchard. Um, I'd go down to the orchard, but I'm worried that it's just going to be so crazy with all the out-of-towners visiting. Because it's a very popular place to go. They're like infamous for their donuts. They make really good blueberry donuts. Okay, so what do we think? I'm not sure how I can improve this more. Um, part of me is like, let's see if we can raise Keeper. I don't know if he's online. Do to do. Nope, he is not online. So we can't get his input. 
That's unfortunate. Maybe you should try casting a summon. I mean, I don't have Slack open. I can try summoning him on Slack. I think this looks better than what it did. I don't see him on Slack either. Um, yeah, we can crop the image a bit. Because I know Keeper has said that he would. Oh, I don't think I can crop it because it's not flat. All right, let's save it as adjusted. And then let's flatten it. So we'll do, I know there's a way to do this. Flatten image. There we go. All right, so we flatten the image and now we want to image. Why is it not letting me crop? Um, see now you say it's rather pink. All right. I thought I told it to open. Oh, that's why, because it's save as, hold on, I need to flatten. Save this as flattened before it will recognize that I'm trying to open a different file. See, now you all say it's rather pink. Okay, so to get rid of the pink, you probably have to adjust the red. How's that? Is that more purple? I feel like I need to zoom in. I do have that up around here. It does task tinge the whole thing. Pink. Well, the sky is black. That's always an improvement. It looks a little on the cool side now, but I think it's fine. All right. So we'll save this. Close this other one. As I wait for it to save. And now we flatten image. And now we save it as the other file. Yes. Okay. Image. Why won't it let me crop? That's very confusing. I guess we'll just use the crop tool. Which is probably what she meant all along. How's that? I just kind of stuck it in the middle. Oh. Are you gonna be good now, Tink? Can I put you down? I'm gonna trust you to be good. A proper cropping. Good. I like it. I'm gonna save this as Justin flattened cropped because you know, that happens. And then stuck in the middle with you. I mean, why not? That's what we're trying to bring out. Why not just, you know, stick it in the middle? All right, we're gonna export it as a JPEG. I don't know why it wants to do a ping. 
And see, even cropped, it's still really large. We'll do 75%. All right. And export all. Boom. And that was M42. Um, yeah, I could resize the image. Right now it is like that's just under a hundred percent. Um I did scale it down to 75% when I exported it. Fine, DPL, I'll do it as ping. In my head, I'm just like, do JPEG, because I think that's just what I was taught. So here I have it as 50%, which makes it uh, 882 by 814. Uh, but because I don't know what he's going to use it for, like I feel the 1700 by 1600 is too big. Because um, I don't know what he's going to use it for. You know, he's going to get his... Uh... He's going to get his Photoshop file back anyways. All right. So yeah, that... That's how quick it is for me to do something that's from the ground. And as a reminder, let's open up the original image. This is what we started with. Oops, I don't want the crop tool anymore. This is what we started with. And this is what we ended up with. So looks like, I feel like we did keep, um, yeah, I know ping is lossless. All I'm thinking about is my first digital camera that saved everything in, in JPEG on like a floppy disk, three and a half floppy disk. So yeah, we um, we darkened it up. And I feel like we did still maintain the the cloud structure. I don't know how much more data we got out of this, unlike what we did last week, which um, like that's what we did last week. That's what we ended up with. I'm trying to look. Do 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 do. do. Oh, not even that. All right. So last week, this is what we started with. And doing the same kind of techniques, I was able to pull out a whole lot more info. And this ended up being the final uh, final um, image, which Taraz was very happy with. So Veronica says, ping is great, and so you can't afford Photoshop anymore. Yeah, yeah, I know that feel. Oh, do I know that feel. But yeah, that's that's what I can do with uh, some of these images. This one didn't pull out a whole lot more, but it looks more like what you would expect to see in the nighttime sky. So, um, I guess any questions? I've already closed marbles, so I can't even offer you know marbles one more time. Um, do to do. -do. I'm just saving everything real quick before I close it. And I didn't make any changes to that. I... I don't know. I mean, I know... Um, I know... GIMP can use ping. I don't use a whole lot of paint. I use mostly GIMP in Photoshop. Oh, thank you, Rocket1959. I hope it was a good tutorial. These are things that I've learned kind of using um, Hubble images. And Hubble images take me longer because they come down in a very specific uh, FITS format, which is, I forget what FITS stands for, but it's a universal format that uh, is used in astronomy for images. And usually when I do a Hubble image, I grab different wavelengths. 
different filters and the different filters capture different wavelengths and I assign each one of those a color based on what's close to what that color range would be or just sometimes I do it I think I've done it at least once arbitrarily and I remember reading about because um, some data is only collected with two filters and I remember reading about how um, people would make like a third layer kind of squishing those two filters together so yeah, DPI, I think it does stand for Flexible Image Transport System. It has a whole lot of meta metadata in it, and it's it's a pretty amazing file image, or it's a pretty amazing uh, file extension. But you can't plop it directly into uh, Photoshop. You have to liberate it, like Fitz Liberator. Fitz! Fitz! Ah, make it rain! So, you know, I do Fitz Liberator, I turn the Fitz images into TIFFs, and then I import the TIFFs into Photoshop and then I can do all the other fancy stuff. So for Rocket 1959 and everybody else, during the Hangout-a-thon, I, we haven't made the Hangout-a-thon schedule yet that I know of. I've been busy with a gazillion other things. Um, Dr. Pamela and I talked about me during some point, <clears throat> during an image processing bit to that would essentially work, you know, everybody through, or walk everybody through how to do this kind of image processing on whatever hardware you have and without paying any money. So, yeah, they sure do, cutie. They love Cheerios, oh my goodness. I have special dog treats nearby too, but we saved the special dog treats for special occasions. But yeah, during the Hangout-a-thon, I'm going to do um, image processing with GIMP. Yes, Veronica, I'm going to use GIMP. GIMP is free and it runs on Linux and Mac and PC. And I will warn you now, it is not my favorite software. Um, the reason I prefer to use Photoshop, aw, oh, bits. The last of this one spits. Thank you, bad paper bear. Oh, yeah. and make it rain. Tinker's like, I would, I did too. And make it sprinkle for Tinkerbell because she's just off camera. Um, the reason why I prefer Photoshop over GIMP is because um, the last time I used GIMP, there were no adjustment layers. And I love adjustment layers in Photoshop. It makes it really easy to undo what I've done or to just turn it off and turn it on again. Um, as far as I know, GIMP doesn't have that, and that's one of the reasons why I just don't use GIMP. I will pay the money for the adjustment layers. GIMP's uh, user interface, or otherwise known as a UI, is also a little different and a little wacky compared to Photoshop, and Adobe's products are such that if you've kind of mastered one UI, it turned big chunks of it transfer over to the other Adobe products. So, and I use other Adobe products in some of the things I do for work. So DPI is warning me that 2.10 changed quite a bit to 2.8. So it sounds like I need to download 2.10 on my laptop and play around with it. Otherwise we're just gonna flail and struggle. But yeah, um, Dr. Pamela thought it was a good idea to just have essentially process an image along kind of thing and yeah audience participation so and we'll go through the entire process of picking an image and doing the fits liberator and all of that and before we do all of that um i will make sure that the community gets the download links that they need to um, get done for downloading so yeah. Anyways, that's all I have for today. Um, yeah, I that's the idea, DPI, is that the audience can join in and process their own image because it's not it's not necessarily difficult. Wayne Johnson asks, is there going to be a face reveal? No, there's not going to be a face reveal. The bit thing you see at the bottom. Uh, that's just gonna go till it's full. When it's full, then we'll have a face reveal. 
I will have a surprise for you for the Hangalathon. No, I am not pregnant. No, I did not elope and get married. No, I am not bringing Tinkerbell and Puck with me. I think that covers it for the usual surprises. Um, <laughs> part of me is slightly annoyed that because I'm of a certain age, I have to make sure everybody knows I'm not pregnant. Um, I will have a surprise for you. And um, lottery then. No, I did not win the lottery, uh, cutie. I'm bringing a space toilet. Uh, no, not bringing a space toilet. I will totally take images of a space toilet if there's one in KSC, and I will totally share them. Merlina says, cool, me neither. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. If I was pregnant, I would be very, very surprised. Anyway. Um, but yeah, those are the things that are not happening. I didn't secretly elope. I'm not pregnant, and I'm not bringing the dogs to Dr. Pamela's house. The dogs will eventually be at Dr. Pamela's house. I just, I don't want to do this. I don't want to travel right around the holidays with two dogs. I don't want to travel right around the holidays with two dogs and then introduce my dogs to her dogs. And no, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. Reminder, her smallest dog is like at least four times the, the size of, of Tinkerbell. So yeah. Astrowise says, uh, you got a tattoo of a space toilet. No, that I could see that be, <laughs> I might get a temporary tattoo of a space toilet, but that, that, that would be kind of funny though, actually. Um, but yeah, I will have a surprise for you uh, at the hangout on, uh, as a reminder for those of you that turned in or tuned in late, I'm not streaming the next two weeks. I will be traveling and or in Florida for not a space launch. I'm not bitter about this, not at all. So I think the next time you'll see me is, I don't know. I don't know when the next time I'll be streaming is. We're taking the rest of this week off for um, Thanksgiving. If a rocket launch happens, maybe I'll do a ninja stream. Um. I make no promises. There's supposed to be an Arian launch. Let me actually look at that real quick. I use rocketlaunch.live. It's updated pretty regularly. Um, let's see. So we use tomorrow. That's not going to be live streamed. The day after that, there's an India launch. And then on the 28th, there's an Electron launch. So the 26th and the 28th. <coughs> Humans are talking. 26th and 28th, I might... Oh no, I'm not streaming the 28th. I just looked at the time for that. Sorry, the Electron launch on the 28th happens at 3 in the morning. Which means... Um, which means that is very... Uh, that's either me staying up really late or getting up really early. And Oh, and Arian maybe on the 26th. Yeah, I think rocketlaunch.live just kind of threw their hands in the air because they totally just put it as November 2019. Um, so maybe the Indian launch, maybe the Aryan launch, I wouldn't, don't count on it. Uh, Wayne says, I will post some pics of my haircut up soon. I'm looking forward to that. I hope you have a before image too. I saw somebody asked something about, um, Rocket1959 asked, are you heading to the space station as a payload specialist? No, I am not a rocket scientist. Um, I just know an awful lot about space toilets. An awful lot about space toilets. But I'm not, by no mean is my um, knowledge of space toilets complete at all. Um, there are still four toilets in space that I know of. There's still 38 windows in space. There's at least one table. No, I haven't counted doors yet. <laughs> this is DPI goes on and asks, what about tables, windows, and doors? At least four, toilet, uh, four toilets, because I don't think a Soyuz is coming down. 38 windows and at least one table. I, I haven't gotten around to finishing counting everything else. So Rigel says, thank you for streaming. Enjoy your time off from entertaining us. I am definitely looking forward to my week off. Um... All right, the plan is to do a decent amount of baking. So I actually need to plan what all I'm going to bake for sure. 
uh, Rocket says, Rocket 1959 says, you learned space toilet from the Big Bang Theory. Oh boy. All right. So for those of you that are like, what's her deal with space toilets? I was preparing for um, a rocket roundup and I was looking into the Soyuz modules and I noticed that each Soyuz module has a toilet in it. And it's the part of the Soyuz module. There's three parts, three parts to the Soyuz module, right? There's the part with all the equipment. There's the part with, um, yeah, the part with all the equipment, the orbital module, and then the descent module. So the part with the equipment, the part with the equipment, um, doesn't, you don't go into it. It's, it's just there. The orbital module is a round thing and that's what's actually at the top. The equipment module is at the bottom. If it's oriented, like it's going to take off. The equipment module is right next to the rocket. Then you have the command module or the descent module. And then at the very top, you have the orbital module. The orbital module is where the toilet is. And I was like, huh, that's the thing that gets burned up. So then I wanted to figure out exactly how many toilets have the Soviets burned up. And the answer is over 140, I think, just for the Soviets. It's definitely over 100. Um, and then I wanted to know how many toilets were in space. And at the time, there were two space stations. And... Um, there's one toilet on the Chinese space station. There's two toilets on the International Space Station and each Soyuz has a toilet. So the number of toilets actually changes depending on how many Soyuz mod or how many Soyuz craft are docked to the ISS. So um, yeah, right now we're not going to have any more than four. For a brief period of time, we had five um, and it'll eventually go down to three. We won't have any fewer than three toilets in orbit ever, unless there's no humans on the space station. So yeah, Rigel says we should call them outer houses. They need a better name than space toilet. They have the slang, the common term for them is space toilet. They have other um, names. Uh, I think it's usually like waste containment system or things like that. So, um, and the American toilet on the ISS actually has a patch and I don't know if I can find it really quick. Um, outhouse ISS. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Yep. The American toilet, no joke, has a patch. Let's see if I can pull this up on screen for you real quick. Photoshop main. Part of me is like, I know I have a way to do this. Do, 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 do. There we go. So this amuses me to no end. There, the American um, toilet is actually <laughs> called the orbital outhouse. And there was a whole team of people that worked on the American toilet um, and there, it, no joke has, uh, an emblem on this that matches this patch and it's called the orbital outhouse. And it is one of the most funniest things I've ever known. The, um, actual U S toilet on the ISS looks like a closet that you just kind of go into. So I thought you'd all find that amusing. I see something about the space poo pod kind of thing. Yeah, kind of. Um, I could go into a whole tangent about space toilets. So I think I'm actually going to save that for another time. Ay, uh, yeah, yeah. Orbital outhouse is so much better than space poo pod. Yeah, definitely. Um, that message says, thanks for your great talks. I always enjoy them. Well, I'm glad you guys are as amused by space toilets as I am. Um, DPI asks, how many outhouses fit into a barn? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Anyway, anyway, it is literally all I had for you today. Um, I will see you all when I see you all. That's just how it is. Uh, 
And yeah, things and stuff. Stuff and things. I'm just trying to find where the, the credit button is. And I think, oh cool, they're rolling. Producing and streaming on your own sometimes is very stressful because I have like a gazillion windows to manage. All right, so DPS says, what time? Um, I don't know what you mean by what time. I, I know if there's a rocket launch, that's at a decent hour, I'll stream it. Otherwise, I'll see you. Oh, yes, it is totally wall of text time. Uh, otherwise, I will see you whenever I see you. So, um, this has been a production of PSI. That's Planetary Science Institute working in collaboration with Youngstown State University here in Youngstown. There might be some sun today, Ohio. Um, I was your host, Annie Wilson. We are produced by Susie Murph and usually Mondays through Fridays, but not this week. We have a daily-ish space and astronomy news roundup called Daily Space. We're taking the week off for the holiday. Um, and yeah, things and stuff. I'm forgetting something. Oh, we're brought the most important thing. The literally the most important thing. We are brought to you by you. So literally, thank you to everybody that follows, that's on our Discord, that subs, that donates bits, that has donated to our streamlabs, that's you know on our Patreon. Everything. Thank you. We we understand if you can't contribute financially, that's fine. Sitting here and chatting with us is free. Following us is free. Um and that helps. Also, inflict us on your friends, family, and enemies because everybody needs more science in their life. And I think that's all of the wall of text that I am obligated to say. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you soon. And uh, yeah, so wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful insert time of day here. And I will see you all soonish. Enjoy your holiday if you're celebrating. If you're traveling, be safe. Otherwise, just keep being awesome. Bye.